So, um, oh, let's start here. Uh, the term Independence Hall doesn't come about until the building is about 90 years old. End of September in 1824, Marquis de Lafayette from France, saying Lafayette, well, when he first came here to be on George Washington's staff, he's all 17 years old. Hence, at the age of 66, he's back. Grand farewell tour to the U.S. The mayor of Philadelphia's introduction on this side of the building is one of the first times the Ward Independence and the Ward Hall are used in the same sentence in public. Lafayette's around Philadelphia a few days. He starts using the phrase, his speeches get printed up, they end up in a book that sold very well, and by the 1830s, parts of this building are a visitor site. But by then, the building's a century old. It's built to be a colonial state house, the 1730s to the 40s. Even by then, Colonial governments had enough structure to them that they could maintain organized three branch governments. Hence, in here, it's a flexible use courtroom. You could have 12 member pettit jury trials, you could have grand jury trials, uh, you could have the Pennsylvania Supreme Court meeting here. The most important event that ties this room to the American Revolution. 8th of July, 1776. Out in the yard at noon, the first public reading of... Yeah, there we go, now we're away. Yeah, declaration. Yeah, 16 minutes, maybe 18 to get that read aloud. Now we got some really fired up Philadelphians out there, don't we? A few of them got in here with an idea. Up there had been on display, carved in wood, crest of the coat of arms of George the Third, to indicate that while the colony had a good amount of practical power to itself, and it had practical power for about 85 years, there'd be no doubt that if desired, Parliament in London, the King's agents, and or the monarch himself could have authority here. It seemed that having heard the information outside, the thought was around, there's gonna be a definite change in the nature of that relationship, isn't there? Climb up, chop the crest off, parade it around, it ends up the evening on a bonfire. So, goodbye. No mistake. The text that got him so excited sounds like the Patriots had George III standing where I am in a prisoner's dock standing trial, bringing evidence against him. This court's open to the public. There are courtrooms like this all through the colonies. Most colonists at least thought they knew a good argument when they heard it. Spring of 76, some people are ready to go, let's break away. Some, even if they kept thinking it through another couple years, decided they wanted to be loyal. And there are others that had no idea at all. If they were enthused to be a patriot, would always commit to a king or what they wanted to have happen. Texts like the Declaration, signed across the hall here, and a lot of the founding text, they're, they're based on the whole process of a room like this, gets to the idea. Arguably, the patriots didn't think the whole British system's rotten and ought to be trashed. 1789 in France, viewpoint of French revolutionaries. And you can go with a pretty good argument. The big 19th, 20th, and now 21st century political revolutions, quite often the point is, let's trash what's been used before. Here the idea, well you know the British system has some pretty decent points to it. Hundreds of years of tradition, 
running debate over decades that still continues on both sides of the Atlantic about the core ideas. What's, what's the nature of liberty? What's justice? Problem, way too ambitious activities of the Crown and Parliament had corrupted the system and gotten everything out of balance when it came to power. Balance is an idea. It's reflected in a lot of different ways in the 18th century, uh, including the buildings. Three windows, three windows. Door over there that goes outside. The door over here that goes absolutely nowhere. It's only here to keep the wall even as part of Georgian style architecture, named not by accident after the kings of Great Britain, named George. At this point, I've got the signing room available. So you can turn around and head on over to where the country got going.
when Ben Franklin arrives in Paris mid-December of 76 to get money and arms from the French and the Spanish. He is representing Congress of the United States. <laughs> Do you get On a few pieces of paper, the articles of Confederation and Perpetual Union. Turned out to be a little optimistic to be thinking of the Confederation as perpetual. It didn't just keep going. Sometimes it worked pretty good, and other times it was, yeah. And um, as often in history, it came down to the money. The state's assemblies kept the power to tax to themselves, thank you. They're elected, it made sense to them, you link the power of taxation to an elected group. The assemblies would then vote donation money to the Confederation, not with much enthusiasm, but they'd send in a bid as long as there's a focus around. We're not getting very far here if we don't win the fighting first, are we? We won the fighting, 81. Peace Treaty, 1783, there goes the focus, and with it, the donation flow basically goes right off a cliff, resulting in the year of the 10th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence, meeting by 1786 in Lower Manhattan, the Confederation government's flat broke. That's one reason amongst the cluster of them. Back in here. Well, if this were 1787, there had been delegates in here for about five and a half weeks. And they're the ones that through the summer put together the same constitution that's still used. Uh, three branch government made good sense, so they keep that idea of executive, judicial, legislative. Power, well, you start power with citizenry, hence the first few wards of the preamble of the Constitution would be we the people. Power gets delegated up to a government. Now we get to abuse of power. Uh, the, the men in here had enough awareness of what you'd learn about human nature from the history of politics, much of the inheritance of the Judeo-Christian religious traditions, George Washington had a noted appreciation of the plays of William Shakespeare. He's not the only one in here who did. Uh, the history of tragedy plays. All these combined. Somebody wants power. Now. A lot of it. They'll kill relatives. They'll betray lifelong friendships. They'll get a troop ready to go. And boom, into the capital city goes an army troop overnight. The power grab inevitably happen fast, aggressively, occasionally end up in a mess, and sometimes end up in a full-out tragedy. In contrast, when it comes to speed, all the way through United States history, under the whole process of checks and balances, this worked out in this room for the United States government. The United States government can run exceedingly slow. This can just get frustrating as anything. I go with an idea that if you vented to the men in here about that, a consensus opinion back's gonna be thank you. That you better hope that by balancing and checking powers, you'll yield a working government that weeds out a decent percent of the abuses of power. Get the text set. Signed up here, September 17th, 1787. George Washington's in that original chair, in charge of the group that creates the job of president. He served as in two years. Uh, let's see. Anybody know where I'm about to go with this? The George Washington was sitting up there, and Ben Franklin, who's out here somewhere, was overheard saying, as the Constitution is being signed, that Franklin had often been looking at the half sun and wondering if it were a rising or setting sun. 
and at length had the happiness to call it a rising sun. Eventually, that chair picks up the name, but with something like this, I can get to the idea the chair had been made in 1778 by and for patriots. Thirteen half rays topped by Liberty Cap. And especially since one of our volunteers made this a couple years ago, I've been putting the idea out to visitors. When you visit other sites that commemorate the founding time frame, it can be somebody's house. Look around the room for thirteens. You'll find them. Engravings of Roman style temples with 13 columns on them. You've got uh, a lot of items that are being produced that literally get the idea in front of people that you'll have 13 independent states. They'll be tied together by some kind of framework or another. And then you can also kind of get go with the idea that you're also going to have a balance between having individual liberties and trying to have a government that's structured enough to punks it. And admittedly, the tension between those two ideas, liberty and a functional government, is right at the core of a whole lot of United States history and goes back to the text that were signed in here. Now, at this point, we're going to have another group coming in here in a moment or two. Uh, I think we're going to have you exit out the same door you came in. Uh, I'll, I'll be out there for a few minutes if you have questions and want some more detail. But uh, beyond that, thanks for the time and have a good rest of the evening and turn around and head out. <laughs>